Welcome to The Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. One way, and you never even thought about becoming a Christian, then you become a Christian. It's not something you just, uh, you know, you're not, you're not going to be on stage preaching. Most likely, you're not going to be on stage preaching the next week. You know, you're going to you're going to be going through some small steps at first to learn about, okay, what does the word of God say? How does it, you know, how does this apply to my life? How can I teach others that are in my wheelhouse and my, uh, you know, my friend group or my social group that I'm, that I'm in, you know? So you're just, it's all small steps. It's not going to be just a big, you know, God's not going to throw you into something you can't handle, but he's also not going to set you up for failure either. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me Rick Larkin from the M5 Mon- Matt's Monday Morning Men's Meeting. Rick, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Now that I've got the recording button hit, this is the second time we've done this because I forgot to hit the record button. So, oh, man, there's a. Such a rookie mistake. <laughs> so anyway, so this should be even better because you've we've you've done this once. So yeah, yeah, all the nerves are gone. Yeah, you're you're all warmed up and ready to go. So right. forgive me for being such a awesome person there and being being a good sound engineer. So uh, today we've got uh, you know on Mondays we have this mini series I call it the M Five Matt's Mon- Monday Morning Men's Meeting. We're talking about uh, Francis Chan's book, uh, Crazy Love. And we've, for the last two or three Mondays now, we've been talking about the uh, chapters one, two, three. And uh, this week, um, chapter four, Rick uh, stepped in for Matt. Uh, Matt uh, went to some place to play baseball with kids or whatever, some tournament. So I uh, asked Rick to st- Matt asked Rick to step in and he did and did a great job Monday. And so thanks for stepping in here, uh, Rick, and doing this. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So this book is really kicking my butt. And uh, it's uh, this chapter. I feel like I could have wrote this chapter. The chapter is called, what is it? Uh, Profile Profile of the Lukewarm. Profile of the Lukewarm. And uh, it's it's hard to get excited about this one, honestly. I mean, that was for me. Um, yeah. What was your take? <clears throat> yeah, this was definitely a, a challenging chapter for me. So one of the things that uh, Francis Chan got to talking about in the beginning was the, uh, you know, he started off with, a, he started, started talking about the parable of how the seed being thrown out on, on the road and whether or not that was, you know, how that wouldn't take root because it was too compact and the soil wasn't prepped properly. And then you throw the seed, you know, you throw a seed out on the rock and it might have a, a layer of good soil, but rock underneath it wouldn't allow the roots to grow. And then you had the thorns and then, uh, then there was good soil. So one thing he talked about was don't assume that you were the good soil. And, you know, as someone who grew up in church, I grew up going to church since I was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. And I started in church. I got saved at an early age when I was probably seven years old. And so I just always assumed that, hey, I've got a good foundation and I've been going to church for a long time. And one of the things he talked about was you're you may not be as good a soil as you think you are. And especially, the you know, he talked about the American church oftentimes is probably the thorny, uh, the thorny soil that kind of chokes out, good, you know, Christians as they as they get planted because we've got so much baggage, you know, we have so much drama that we don't want to get rid of. We, a lot of, a lot of people in America like drama. And so, you know, and I'm, and I'm one, I'm guilty of, uh, I like to join in on, on gossip sometimes. I like to join in on, you know, water cooler talking around the office of what's going on. And instead of saying, you know, being uplifting and helping people, a lot of times I just join in on what they're saying and kind of add to the chaos instead of bringing clarity and, and, direction from what the word of God says in that perspective. So that's one of the things he touched on here that I, that I really liked. And then there was other things on here that were really challenging for me um, that he discussed. And so this, this chapter was kind of a hard one to read and a hard one to really sit back and think of, okay, now where can I make changes to my own life? And what am I 
doing right? What am I doing wrong? And and how can I grow in my relationship with God? So there's probably no such thing as anyone being good soil. There's probably probably, probably just not. yeah, you're probably better soil you know uh less thorny um yeah. but you know to get to the to the grade a approved good soil man what's that look like and that's uh that is uh a lot of work you know we <laughs> yeah. uh, you know <laughs> it's a lot of prayer I, and i know these these answers that i'm going to give some of them are going to sound cliche and some are going to sound the typical Christian answer, but the reason they're typical Christian answers because they work. Um, but waking up in the morning and praying and praying and just asking God to direct you and guide your steps for the day and to help you out and then maybe even guide you to where what passages you should read in the Bible. You know, I'm not going to tell everybody they should read the Bible cover to cover every year, although that'd be a good thing to do, mm -hmm. but not everybody can handle that. And so, that, again, that's kind of like if you were, you know, give a new Christian. Uh, you know, the Bible and tell them read to cover to cover in one year, that might, you know, that might be do more harm than good uh, initially because they don't understand, you know, they may not understand what's going on or, or, or why things are written the way they are, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, it's kind of like I have a garden here at my house. It's, we have a pretty good sized garden, but I have even no, no matter what kind of soil I put in there, I still have to go through and pick out the weeds as they grow. You know, I still have to go through and, and take care of that. And I can't overwater it. I can't underwater it. You know, it's it's the same thing with our Christian lives. We can't, you know, be there where we're not taking care of of our own spiritual lives and 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 uh, you know, getting in and praying and going in and picking out the bad stuff. You know, the bad relationships that come up can be a weed or the bad conversations we find ourselves in at work or wherever. You know, those are the things we need to guard ourselves against and really take care of. And I think that's uh, that's one way that we can kind of live our lives every day to kind of become less lukewarm and more on fire for God is really just taking small bites sometimes and, and praying more and, and getting into God's word and seeing what he has to say and, and offer us and just taking it one step at a time and not trying to, not trying to run a, you know, a, a race, a marathon as fast as you can, you know, you got to take it and pace yourself. That's a real good point. You know, I hadn't thought about this before until just now. <clears throat> you know, when you have your garden, you know, mm -hmm. wherever that is, and you uh, you uh, throw the seed on there. When when we hear the parable of the three so soil, uh, the three soils or whatever, uh, it's almost like there's bad soil, there's thorny soil, there's good soil. And that's it. So if you're thorny soil, you know, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> that's not so that might not necessarily be true, because I'm sure when you started out, <clears throat> it started out being just a grassy patch or yeah. rocky patch or something. And so you, yeah, you, had have to start, you have to get in there, you have to work it, you have to fix it up, you have to prepare it, fertilize it, um, stack the deck in your favor that when you put the seeds down and you don't just probably throw them around, you probably put them yeah. in nice rows. and. You know, there's a you know, process we, here. Yeah, we even start those seeds months in advance in smaller, you know, small containers, just a little bit of good soil, and let them grow into that and mature before we transplant them to the bigger garden where they have a bigger opportunity and more of an opportunity to produce fruit, right? So it's a lot of that's the same way in our in our Christian walk. You know, yeah. if you're a brand new Christian, especially you're an adult, you've been living your life one way and you never even thought about becoming a Christian, then you become a Christian. It's not something you just you know, you're not, you're not going to be on stage preaching. Most likely you're not going to be on stage preaching the next week. You know, you're going to, you're going to be going through some small steps at first to learn about, okay, what does the word of God say? How does it, you know, how does this apply to my life? How can I teach others that are in my wheelhouse and my, uh, you know, my friend group or my social group that I'm, that I'm in, you know? So you're just, it's all small steps. It's not going to be just a big, you know, God's not going to throw you into something you can't handle, but he's also not going to set you up for failure either. Thank you for joining the Scott Townsend Show. We'll be back right after this.
Hey, this is Scott, and we have a new way of allowing listeners to sponsor, to help with the production of this podcast. We're going to start using buymeacoffee.com. If you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend, you can make a donation. It takes a lot of work to put these podcasts together, so um, if you want to help us out, Keep this going. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend. And now, back to the program. So what do you think Francis Chan's uh, bottom line is on this chapter? What's, uh, what's, the, what's the key idea he's trying to get yeah. across to us here? It's a good question. I think in this chapter, he's talking a lot about not be could not be complacent in your spiritual walk um you know it's uh it's going to be different for someone who got saved two weeks ago than it is for someone who got saved 30 years ago but i think the steps are kind of the same of waking up and praying and reading your bible and um and but to not be complacent in that and those movements and those actions and just seek god and ask him all right how can i better serve you today what can i you know put the right people in my path that i can witness to you to those people and grow your kingdom, you know, those are things that we need to be doing. And, and, and that's not always going to be comfortable. You know, God might be telling you, Hey, go, go talk to the guy on the corner there at Walmart who's asking for money and, you know, give him some money, but also share my word with him. You know, he may be asking you to do that. And that's very uncomfortable for a lot of people, but it's also, you know, just as much as that guy needs, needs salvation. So does somebody who's, you know, a billionaire who could also be just as intimidating or more so to go talk to that person about God, you know? It may be very difficult to go talk to Elon Musk about God. So, uh, but it's a, it's stepping out of your comfort zone is where it's going to, how you're going to step out of that, you know, move from being lukewarm to a Christian that's really pursuing God with everything they have mm-hmm. um, is moving out of your comfort zone. That's, that's not an easy task to do. That's not an easy thing to do. But, it, but uh, I think that's a lot of what Francis Chan's getting at in this chapter is step out of your comfort zone. Don't be okay with sin just because there's grace to cover it doesn't mean keep doing it and move on from there and, and keep growing you know I, you and i were talking about the uh uh last time when i didn't hit the record button we were talking about the sauna or the whirlpool <laughs> you know um <clears throat> and you want it warm you you don't even want it lukewarm in the sauna or the whirlpool i mean you're wanting that water pretty warm exactly. you know if it was lukewarm, yeah. you'd be yeah. going, "Hey, there's something wrong with this machine here." You know, it's uh, it's exactly. not cold, it's not hot, it's just right in the middle, and it's not helping anybody. Um, yeah, and go so ahead. I had shared this on the last time around. Uh, that, you know, when I <laughs> <laughs> so when I was uh, when I was right out of high school, I you know I joined the Marines. <clears throat> or well, at first I, I went to Bible College in Tulsa, and then. Um, I felt like after the, after a year that God was calling me to the Marine Corps, so I went to the Marines, and I had when I joined the Marines, I was like, man, I had been going to church pretty much five days a week, maybe six days a week, and I was like, I read the Bible cover to cover and studied God's Word, and I was like, I'm in a good spot, so I kind of slacked off. I got complacent with with my walk with Christianity, and then over time, next thing you know, I'm I'm no different than any other Marine who wasn't a Christian. I was cussing, and I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing and living the way I should have been living. And, but I was still judging everybody in my mind the same way that I, you know, as if I was still, you know, living for God wholeheartedly. And I was like, Oh, that guy just said, drop the, that guy just dropped the first word. He's probably going to hell, you know, and I was doing the exact same thing. Yeah. And so, but I, uh, but the, the step for me was getting back in the word of God and then saying, all right, God, I've sinned. I know I'm, I'm far from you, further than I've ever been. And even though I had been really close to God, I flipped back. I got real complacent. So I had to start getting back in the Word of God, getting back into prayer and praying. And then when I got married, praying with my wife and praying with our son. And so those were things that were not easy to do. Mm-hmm. And initially, especially praying with my wife was not an easy thing to do when I, when I, uh, after I got married. And we didn't do it for probably the first eight, eight years of our marriage. We didn't pray together. You know, we just occasionally if she had, you know, something going, you know, her back was hurt or she was in pain, then I would pray for her. But otherwise, it was just a very like 
all right, well, I hope you get better, you know, and I hope you yeah. have a good day. And we never really did it. But now we, we've done things to make our marriage grow and our, and our spiritual walks together grow. And then our spiritual walk apart from that, just with God, you know, just trying to get closer to God in every, in every aspect of our lives. And a lot of that for people is going to be, whether you're a brand new Christian or you've been a Christian for 30 years is like I said, is getting in the word of God and praying and not necessarily praying every day or not, I'm sorry, not reading the whole Bible through in a year, praying every day for sure, but not necessarily reading the whole Bible through in a year, but just taking it a bite at a time. Scott Townsend showed it in start up with Scott Townsend, not getting, you know, not taking the first step of, you know, getting on the microphone and talking, you know, that you had to at some point stretch your faith and say, okay, I'm going to try this. And, you know, same thing with what we do at the gym or what we do with the word of God, you know, we have to take that first step and grow it little by little and step by step and, and move from there. Well, Rick, our time is my back's against the clock here. Um, really appreciate you stepping in for Matt Clark. Uh, thanks for leading Monday morning. Did a great job. Did a great job here. And uh, yeah, we should uh, have you back and maybe we'll have you and Matt back. All right. Dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for Rick Larkin, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching, listening to the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you later. The Scott Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Let's go.